The 1900 Wrestling Podcast is brought to you as always by patreon.com slash 1900 wrestling. A lot of people give you Patreon pitches. Here's here's a very simple one. It, this is a, a, a transaction. We don't take any money from this show. What we do is we throw it on into a big old pot where we buy wrestling tickets. We're going to be buying wrestling tickets tomorrow. So now is a great time to go ahead and get on the Patreon. Now, you're not just doing it out of the goodness of your heart, see? What you're getting is access to the best private club in wrestling today, brava. Yeah. It's the 1900 Wrestling Discord. It is where you can watch live wrestling with some of the coolest people on the planet. No BS, no random spamming, no dumb opinions. Maybe some dumb opinions. But still, they're with your friends. It's like watching it with uh, people on the couch. I'm in there. Dils is in there. All of our hardcores. It is the best place to be. So go ahead and get on the team. Patreon.com slash 1900 Wrestling. But enough of talking about how we support the show. What do you say we just do with that damn thing? I want you to call me for all of wrestling's latest news and views. I've been involved in wrestling for 35 years, and nobody, but nobody knows wrestling like me. Remember the number one. 900 Wrestling. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, welcome to yet another edition of 1900 Wrestling. Joining me as always is the man, the myth, the legend, Willie Dills Gregory. How you doing? Uh, tired, but I'm here and uh, ready to talk wrestling. We we had uh, not a lot of things to talk about. There's the greatest Royal Rumble that happened. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Of that. I don't know what else is going on. We're going to talk. But you want to know what? We're actually just going to talk. Hey, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of... Uh, I, I we we're, we're, man I gotta we gotta organize uh, uh, getting all these tickets tomorrow. Tickets go on sale for the G one special in right. uh, uh, San Francisco, California. It's gonna be a big uh, big fun time. We gotta make sure that we get primo seats for that. Uh, but you wanna know what we were actually hanging out this weekend in mm -hmm. Las Vegas. So the, last this time is, we were together in Las Vegas was. Uh uh, ROH, Ring of Honor. yeah, uh, uh, which was a blast. It's always man. Vegas is just never a bad time. It's just like that 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 town is there for a reason. Uh, but but we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So you got in the night before I did, right? You got in on yeah. a, on, a, on on Thursday night. I came in on Thursday. We just kind of messed around in the hotel for a little while. Went you know hung out in some people's rooms, had some drinks. Uh, and then the plan was to go to bed. Yeah. Early. Just let's just get one night where everybody yeah. gets a nice night's sleep. Mm -hmm. You wake mm -hmm. up refreshed. You want to know what? Maybe hit the gym real quick, get a little pump yeah, in, maybe just a feeling in the good. Pool. Yeah. Maybe gets just like get like a parfait for breakfast. Oh, or something. something nice and healthy. Just a light, a light, yeah. fun breakfast. Maybe some roughage, yeah. right? Like maybe just I'm a not even going to get coffee. I'm going to get like a tea, like a black tea. Oh, you know? like an Earl yeah. Grey, right? Really like, take care of my body. That's just, what I, was the plan. You know, because <laughs> you want it. You want to you want to stay in prime shape to really sure. enjoy everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to also I was going to take, you know, vitamin B before I go to bed. Make oh, sure that man. I wash my face with. Something that's really gonna, you know, exfoliate. A nice, yeah, a nice scrub. Get some essential yeah. oils, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, like, maybe this like is... a, a bubble bath before bed. Hey, you want to know what? You maybe know? call down, get a little spa, in, you know, sure. like maybe, maybe yeah. like the next morning, get a nice little, nice little massage. You're gonna be feeling like a sure. million bucks the next day. Exactly. Uh, maybe just get a hooker, but only for companionship. Like, just, we just to talk. Just to talk. You know? I mean, yeah. listen, we all lead different lives. Why don't get we exchange more information? Chest. Exactly. Just looking to really take care of myself, get a nice night's sleep, get up early, watch wrestling with my good friend Justin. Mind, Harvey. body, and spirit. That's, That's really right. what you want. Yeah. But instead, what I did is <laughs> I just played craps until five in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking cigarettes, drinking whiskey. It was bad. Uh, so, yeah, I woke up. I... <laughs> then I then I had a really, really good idea yeah. when I got back to the room that yeah. if I... Take a Tylenol PM, I will sleep so deeply that I will get up bright and early when my alarm goes off. But okay. No, I just slept right on through that thing. So and, wait a minute. Uh, so I All didn't right. make it to the room until what, like 11? Something like that? 
So, yeah. All right. So here, let's let's stop your story. Let, let's put a pin in your story for right. for now and just know that yes. that Dills sleeps through his alarm. Yes. There you go. That's that, that's basically the middle part of my story. We switch back to me where I it's was going too. I was going to fly in to uh I had a ticket to fly in to uh, uh Vegas that Thursday night. I had a hotel to fly in that Thursday night. Then I realized about a couple weeks ago that I also had tickets for opening night of Infinity War at uh, the Alamo Draft House. So I uh, uh, go to that. Now, here's the only problem here, Willie, is that uh, that Infinity War screening was at 10.30 p.m. Pacific time. So everything Across is local. from your house as well. Yeah, it's a little bit of a haul. I mean, uh, you know, it's either a, a BART uh, or, or you know, you can get an Uber back and forth. But it's definitely a little bit. So, uh, again, Infinity War is about, uh, what, two hour, two and a half hours? Something like uh, that? About two and a half. It's a long movie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's lengthy, right? There's a lot to pack in there. Yeah. So, I'm done with that at 2 o'clock in the morning. My new flight out to Vegas is at 6 o'clock. In the morning. So essentially, I'm going home to sleep for two hours before waking up at four o'clock, getting a really quick shower, heading down to the airport so I can get ready for my six o'clock flight to Vegas. Now, here is something that I would like to spell out for everybody, because this is scientific information that everybody needs to know. When you're on two hours of sleep, you really, the only thing that you need is rest. I will tell you that I tried everything else. <laughs> and that's where we come into as I get picked up from the airport. And all of a sudden, it, it's not even like I can come into my room and catch a quick cat nap. Because no, the plan no. is... Saudi Arabia has spoiled that possibility. Exactly. Because the three of us, me, you, and Mizzoula, uh, the Mike yeah. Grilla, the old school, the, the Vegas Sherpa, the man who makes it all happen in Sin City, is picking me up from the airport, and we're going right from the airport to the plaza where the plan is either if I can get my room that early, because I wasn't supposed to check in until 3 o'clock, so yeah. uh, either I was going to get my room or... We were going to have to bang on your door <laughs> until, until you I, woke yeah, up. Until I bleary eyed to let you guys in. Yeah. To let us in. So, luckily, we we're able to get my room, which is good. But also, it means that there's no rest for me. It's not like, hey, you want to know what? I'll catch up with the cruiserweight match and the Raw Tag Team Championships. I'm going to catch some Z's. I'll meet you guys wherever you're going. Because it's just me and Mitz. And Mitz has already invited all these other people up to my room. So, the only person who got any sleep during the Greatest Royal Rumble was your friend of mine, Curly. Who, in very yeah, oh, yeah. Curly fashion, just laid down on the floor and immediately started yeah. snoring like a bear. He, he had another late night as well, from what I hear. He did. So, so you, yeah. you uh, wake up about uh, a quarter of the way through the show and, and walk across the hall... To yep. uh, to to meet uh, uh, the rest of the crew, and, and goat I did one was of those in there. Wake ups where it was just, I went from dead asleep to just blah, and then my phone. Oh god, it was like still. I think it was still going off the alarm, and uh, I got messages for you guys. So there was, <laughs> yeah, there was a. Uh, there was no like quick shower. There was no. Anything. Now the good the good like, news oh, is, oh god, I gotta get over there. You so. were literally across the hall. Like, yeah, it's, it was a good. It was good that my commute was very short. But yeah, yeah, grabbed a couple of uh, Dos Equis, bottle of whiskey, came right on up. And therein begins the problem for me, because I have two hours of sleep, and at that point, all I have from then until I go to sleep are friendly faces offering me liquor. That's it. That's all I face. The only thing that I should have done is bowed out and said, all right, all you guys go do something else. I'm yeah. going to sleep for a few hours so I can make it through the night. And I would have if I had been allowed a reprieve from the parade, thankful though I might be, the parade of friendly people, all of which want to offer me something to drink and I am very, very willing to take. Uh, I guess sure. now is where we can get in our greatest Royal Rumble uh, uh, thoughts. What did you think of the pay-per-view? 
so after I have had a chance to catch up on some of the stuff that I missed. Um, no, no, I didn't sit and watch all this because basically the gist that I heard from everybody afterwards was these were a lot of awesome matches with finishes that don't disturb the current situations each one is having in their whatever their feuds are, right? This was yeah. basically like, let's have a bunch of matches, but let's accomplish nothing. Which that is... That was kind of how the, well, the Royal but that's, Rumble went down. That's kind of the house show idea. Yeah. Right? It's like the world's biggest house show is basically what happens. But right? I'm like down with that. I would sure. rather have the exciting matches where nothing really gets done, like at a house show, then have like all the meaningful matches where things just incrementally slowly move forward. Like sure, just sure. have have the big exciting things. I, I, I kind of love that. It, it reminded me of that roadblock pay-per-view a few uh, a, a few years ago where it was like Triple H versus Dean Ambrose where like you kind of knew that Dean Ambrose wasn't going to win the the championship, but it was just yeah. a great match. And and sure. the 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 you can always use the wrestling storytelling to get right up to the edge of the impossible, make you believe the impossible, and then pull back. And then somebody cheats or they get counted out or just do all these finishes that we don't really see so much anymore in the WWE. Well, the so the I would say I would say that the actual ending to the Royal Rumble itself got something done but outside of that no titles changed hands well um, new champions but it was in a vacated title the raw the raw tag team champions oh, yeah, yeah, are yeah, now sure, are sure, now sure. the deleters of the world uh, yeah bray so bray wyatt and matt hardy are now the champions right so yeah so there you go there was uh, it didn't change hands but it new new champions a, new champions and, and thank god the bar is off for all because i think as much as i enjoy the bar man do I not need to see them face the same people a million times on Raw like yeah, they no, have for the last year? New stuff for sure. But you know, okay, so John Cena Triple H, I thought that was a fun match. That was just like a you know a nice. Okay, here's two guys who don't really have a reason to ever cross paths right now. We're just gonna have them wrestle. You you want to know what it made me appreciate is look at the speed of that match versus the speed of say the Intercontinental Championship match. And, like, just baseline, matches have gotten so much faster and so much more dynamic than even two greats like Cena and Triple H are, are going to naturally go in, like, a house show setting, which is basically what this was. Yeah, you kind of, I kind of expected just a lot of fake punching and uh, slowly walking over and things like that. And there was some of that. There, there was, was a fair know, amount of that, was, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't. It didn't feel like too much of that. Sometimes you're watching one of those matches and you're like, "I get it, okay." You're, yeah, you're, you know, you're stumbling. You're out on your feet because his punches are so hard. Like, yeah, th this was this was fine, and there was some good stuff in there, uh, some finisher stuff, finisher spam things. Well, fine, whatever. Um, outside of that, it's like nothing was really like eye popping. But I did really like the ending to the ladder match. Uh, because yeah. you don't really see them do it that way very often, right? Where he just like leapt up and like beat him to the to the uh, belt, which yeah. is normally normally it's like a bunch of punching on top of the ladder, and then somebody kind of gets the best of the other one, and then slowly climbs their way up to mounting cheers. But that and that to me was, that's that's a great house show finish. Right. Yeah. Where it's like it's not about the story. It's about the athletics and it's about bringing you right to the point of like, oh, my God, they're going to do a title change in my hometown. No, they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody I mean, like you, you just pulls you it out see of them butt. do like a race to the to the belt very often. It's mostly it's, it's just everyone's been taken out. And then one guy, <laughs> Dolph, Dolph Ziggler style. Yeah, barely make it up the ladder, but this was kind of cool because he just was like springboard up onto it. Go, get, I got it before you did. Yeah, that was kind of cool. I like that a lot. Shinsuke Nakamura, whatever. That's. We I mean, I'll tell you what. I'm more dick punching. If we get, I mean, it, uh, inevitably we are building to another one of these, which I think I think they're set up yeah. set to it's face off at Backlash. At Backlash, it's already. Uh, set, I think I'm fine with them playing this out for as long as they need because, oh. Cock knocker Nakamura, uh, uh, I am into it. I'm into his vibe, and and you know what? It made me remember that like that was the first time that I saw Nakamura was as 
a heel and he kind of became like cool because he always, even as a face, kind of acted like a heel. And I realized that there's like, there's just, he feels like reinvigorated, like as a character, like all of his stuff is just so disrespectful and you like feel it. It's not him like having fun, Maggle. It's him uh, uh, just really acting like a piece of shit. And it's great. Oh, yeah, yeah he, oh. it's very believable too. Like he's, uh, when he first turned, I was like, oh man, this is going to be hard for me to buy in. To Nagamura as a bad guy, and then it slowly becomes like, no. Oh, okay, he was just holding back the whole time when he was a good guy. This is really this is the true Nakamura right here. So yeah, I, I'm I'm getting to it. I, this this yeah, I didn't mind. Some people were complaining about this finish, like oh, dumb way to finish. It's like no, like they fought to. Now you've kind of gotten this this thought in your head, like these guys might just be equal. I don't know who's supposed to come out on top. And yeah. then when we finally do get inevitably somebody to uh to kind of get the best of the other it's going to be the payoff's going to be great exactly well and like look i'm i'm down with some of these old school finishes some of these count outs like uh, it's fine just keep it going like not everything has to be i'd rather that than like well here let me just say this this is this will be our, our sit down marks for, for for the for the episode uh you can't bitch about how ah, it's 50-50 booking. It's 50-50 booking. Like, why'd you take all the heat out of it because he won? And then also bitch about a count out. Because this is to get you to the next thing where you're not beating somebody. So it's fine. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, there's, there's too much complaining about not just 50-50 booking things, but guy is not looking strong enough this guy was supposed to win this guy was supposed to win it's like I, I get kind of fed up with that like where we're pretending to be fans of a thing that we understand is you know they they set up who's supposed to win these are all storylines that are being played out why do like you have some opinion on it and so you need to force them to do the thing that you didn't like otherwise it's bad like i the whole thing is like just let it happen man yeah. For wrestling fans, just let it happen. Just all let right. it go. Come on. Uh, uh, all right, so... And then, yeah, I guess the last one that really matters besides the, the big one is Brock Lesnar. From well, Bro well, there is, of course, Undertaker Rusev in a casket Oh, match. yeah, that's true. Yeah, which uh, Rusev got more offense in than John Cena, so Rusev, ergo, better than John Cena, right? Tell you what, can't argue with that. Uh, so the law of the kingdom is laid. And uh, uh, yeah, no, I I I, I enjoyed that match. I thought, again, like I would rather random stuff like this, like have the Undertaker come back for five minutes, wrestle somebody vibrant, and sure he's gonna win in a casket match. But whatever, it's cool. I dig it. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, I think I think it was definitely this was better. Maybe this was kind of the point of the of the uh, you know WrestleMania stuff being just like a squash. Is maybe he just wasn't quite ready to actually do something like this. Yeah. But this was actually like a good match. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations to Undertaker having a good match. Congratulations to Rusev for, for getting you know, making yeah. it work. Uh, I thought that was fun too. And then, yeah. And then Brock and Roman. We, so, so we were in the hotel room complaining about, or some people were like, but he didn't touch the mat or whatever. He, he, he touched the cage. So, all right. So, if, so if yeah, you this, if, I guess if, you could say it's a, it's a squirrely finish, right? Yeah. If you haven't seen it, the match ends. The cage match ends. Uh, we're, we're both, by the way, where Brock Lesnar climbed to the top of the cage, which is something that I did not think he oh was going God, to yeah. do. <laughs> That's a terrifying sight. Uh, he, uh, uh, Roman spears Brock out of the cage. And uh, that is the end. Uh, Brock, I guess. Touches the the floor well, first. Brock's back the hits the ground first. Yeah. Before Roman, I guess so. Roman's on top, but now, oh man, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, what are the actual rules? Is it feet touch the ground? The rules are whatever Vince McMahon says they are. <laughs> All right. All Technically, right. this is okay. So this is yeah. This is one of the other things too. It's like I don't really care about the rules. I get it. Yeah. Brock wins. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's fine. The it rule is we're not changing the title part, in yeah, Saudi like, Arabia, I, pal. I was saying this like hand is part of the ball in basketball. Yeah. Cage is part of the floor. Makes sense. You know, I guess so. Uh, uh, look, it, it, 
I thought that match was better than the WrestleMania match by it was. by a damn yeah. sight. Uh, I like it when I like it in those matches when Roman gets a little bit of offense in early, and that's what I think kind of like sucked the wind out of that WrestleMania match. Is like, like they we love it when they're just big old brontosauruses hitting each other with their necks, and it's like that's that's the best part of that kind of fight. And I thought yeah. we got a lot more of that in this one than we did in the WrestleMania match. The finish was rad. There's never a time when a crowd is upset because somebody gets speared outside of a cage, through a yeah. cage wall. Always a crowd pleaser. Always a good time. So I was excited I, about I that. I mean, yeah, to me, it's like, okay, I get it. Like At, at that point, it's kind of a, a ruling that gets made. And, you know, getting bogged down in this type of stuff when you're a wrestling fan, I think it's just kind of a waste of time. Like, it's like we don't need to we don't need to sit here and debate because, again, it's like the whole thing is set up to tell a story. Yeah, that's the story that was told to us. It's it's not. Yeah, this isn't football where we want a slow motion replay to, uh, you know, see if like the ball crossed the, you know, the plane that that's interesting. That's actually, by the way, that's not interesting in in other sports. You know? Yeah. Is like the whole replay system and all that. It's actually one of the things I hate the most. So wrestling, t don't, I don't have to deal with it. It's great. Let me mindlessly watch the match and be like, oh, Brock won. Okay. Cool. Well, speaking of replays, let's go to the greatest Royal Rumble. A 50-person Royal Rumble match featuring uh, surprise returns. We got Hornswoggle. We got the great Kali. Uh, and we got one of the most memorable moments in any kind of battle royal history, as a sprinting Titus O'Neil <laughs> tripped over his own feet and took a header under the ring. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty epic. Uh, yeah, best moment of the pay-per-view by far. And they showed it <laughs> 20 times after. Uh, the rumor was Vince McMahon could not breathe because he was laughing so hard and continued to demand that the replays get played over and over, sure. and, over and over and over again. That doesn't surprise me at all. Like Titus grabbed him by the arm one time. So, you know, he, yeah. he needs to, yeah, he needs to get it. Uh, it, it was hilarious. There, there's a few, there's a few like, some good ass memes. We got some good memes minutes. going. Uh, 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 based on Titus's uh, uh, CNX fall. Oh yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's this new sweet meme, uh, and and now it's up on WWE.com like for multiple angles. So yeah, just to, just to out. enjoy it from every possible angle. Uh, Braun Strowman wins. The Royal Rumble, he gets a belt that who knows if we will ever see on television again. Uh, and yeah, what was the deal with that? Did they just want him to hoist something? Is that is this a Saudi prince re request again? Like, I want him to have a belt at the end because so, he re apparently he requested uh, freaking Yokozuna. And that's, that's why we got the random sumo wrestler. That's why we got the sumo guy. Yeah, uh, he requested the uh, the ultimate warrior. Little late, little well, late. Tough to, yeah, tough to pull that one off. Um, and apparently, he also requested man somebody. I can't remember who the other person was, but he made like these weird requests for people he wanted to see, and they tried to make it work. I guess so. Yeah, that's why there was. Um, and what was the guy's name? Oh man, I'll find it here in a second. Something. But Sumi? yeah, it was just like he came out and everyone was like, "Who? <laughs> who is now?" Yeah, no, we 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 did a little uh, little Hiroki pull. Sumi. Hiroki Sumi. Agent, yes. Uh. Oh, yeah, and he wanted The Undertaker, and so he yeah. got The Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah, and then one of the comments in Squared Circle was, thank God he didn't request Hulk Hogan and CM Punk. Ah, you want to know what? <laughs> it would be curious. I would, Yeah, I'd actually be very curious to see how they would handle that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, okay, notable thing outside of the fact that uh, Titus fell on his face and yeah. Braun Strowman won, Daniel Bryan was in there for an hour and 16 minutes. Holy crap. Talk about yeah. getting his win back. And he was beat to shit by the end yeah. of it. His yeah. chest was laced. It was red as hell. I'm surprised that this was the move they decided to make at the biggest or the greatest Royal Rumble, the biggest house show in the world. You want to know because what? Uh, ever, I, man, they're not protecting him at all here. They're just like, ever oh, since for an hour. Ever since the last Royal Rumble where they knocked him out, uh, Bray Wyatt knocked him out halfway through and Roman got booed, it's like, congratulations, Daniel Bryan will never be in a Royal Rumble for less than an hour. 
Yep, exactly. Uh, so yeah, he was, and he was actually eliminated by Big Cass, who didn't come in until 49. So that tells you, yeah, basically he was in there the entire time. Um, uh, that and, of course sets up yeah. their match at Backlash. Uh, I guess a uh, clinch in our chat room is saying that uh, Roddy Roderick Strong was responsible for the chops, <laughs> oh, <laughs> lighting geez. him up. So Mike Kanellis uh, wins the award for shortest time in there at three seconds. Is that the um, record? Did, did did he beat the uh, the Santino record? The Santino record was like what, like seven seconds or something? No, I don't know. It it's another one of those. Short. It's it's literally like at. It's so fast that you have to try. You have to like take one it's step like in and jump second, right in. Right? Yeah. yeah, like the moment you enter the ring, you are out of the ring. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then no, I don't think so because yeah, three seconds took a bit of. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's three seconds. Like one second is the Santino record where it was okay. Literally a slide in and he immediately goes over the top. That's like an unbe. Yeah, that's more unbeatable than uh, than fifty six game hitting streak. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I mean there was some fun stuff in here. It was good. I, oh, I, I I had a blast. It was it was a yeah. lot of fun. I mean, a fifty yeah. man Royal Rumble is really long, but uh, I enjoyed the surprises. Uh, you know, I thought the end was good. It was uh, it was it was really 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 fun. Now let's talk about something out of it. One thing that was missing from the greatest Royal Rumble pay per view was women. None of Female them wrestlers. performed. Yes. However. Uh, now confirmed, you were saying that they did get paid. So this is the this is the news I got on uh, R squared circle. That is then this is obviously goes through PW Insider. Uh, okay. It is apparently confirmed that, or confirmed this independently that WWE is indeed paying them as if they had made an appearance. Gotcha. And it seems like the wrestlers are getting pretty good paydays from this event because there's so much money coming in from it. So, I mean, it's, it's the right thing to do if you're going to also kind of do the wrong thing to do, which is, you know, kind of, uh, kowtow to this archaic thing that the Saudi Arabians are, have decided, you know, it's like you're a wrestling promotion that is highly touting its female roster right now. Right. Yeah. And then you take this deal, and it's just it's a lot of money, man. And I get it; it's a lot of money, but that's a uh, it's a pretty big part of your of your product right now to just say, okay, no, you guys aren't coming because they won't let you, and we're just gonna do it. So I, you know, it's it's to me, it's like the least they could do, but it's I I, I think guess, I think well, I think the I think least it's, they could do is not pay them at all. But this is like the next step up. It, it, I, it's know. it's it's the best way to deal with a bad situation. Is, sure. is to make sure that, look, they're <laughs> it, it, they had to do the job by not showing up, uh, yeah. but you know you still get paid. They're a big part of the product. I think that was the right thing to do. The other person that didn't show up was Sami Zayn. Yeah, despite the fact that choice, he, correct. he said that he was going to show up on Raw that week, he apparently did not go. Uh, that because it was a decision by WWE via. The, their partners with the kingdom of Saudi Arabia that they were going to respect Saudi culture. So I okay. don't know if it was Sami's he, work. Did he and, say he wouldn't respect Saudi so culture? So he, apparently this was not Sami Zayn's decision. This according to Pro Wrestling Sheet. And Ryan Satin's pretty good. Uh, it's, I, I don't know whether or not it's his work in Syria it's got to be, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's because he is—he is very outspoken when it comes to one cause in particular. Um, no, yeah, no, he does a lot of charitable work in Syria. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, that has to be—that has to be the reasoning behind it. But that's—that's that's unfortunate. I mean, I guess again, you know, the, the, I the thing that to me, it's like at a certain point, do we need the money? Do we really need the money? I guess that would be the question I'd be asking. In the words yes. of Spaceballs, they're not doing it for money. They're doing it for a shitload of money. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to find out exactly how much money uh, when they have to report their finances in a couple months. But the, the the rumors on how much they're getting paid for these things is astronomical. And Well, six, it's like something like $60 billion over 10 years. 
that that was the thing that just got posted. And I'm like, what? Well, not billion, right? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's here's the here's the post. Six billion over ten years? Not that that's all going to WWE, but that's what Saudi Arabia is. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, no. The the Saudi twenty the Vision twenty thirty campaign entertainment. Yeah, yeah, is is gigantic, and and that I can imagine is sixty billion over over ten years. Yeah, over ten years. Yeah. Uh, but this is a, a tremendous amount that's of money. Not just for wrestling. That's for other things too, right? Yeah. So yeah. Reverend Puck is saying that it was a hundred million over ten years, which, I mean, look, that's ten million dollars every show, and then I have to worry about selling tickets. They literally just show up and run a pay per view, and that's it. They wouldn't even yeah. have to stream it if they don't want to, but they're doing it because it's it's another value add, right? Mm. So okay, so there's a couple of things as part of this, which is kind of interesting. Um, one of the one of the uh, kind of motivations is to have Saudi Arabia be thought of as. This is a quote here, which I have no idea is accurate or not, but a country of moderate Islam that is open to all religions, traditions, and people. So this is the ambition. Yes. This is not necessarily the reality at the moment. No, 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 no. This, no, this but, is this is the uh, uh, the the new crown prince of yep. Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin prince Salman. Mohammed, yep. Uh, this is his big idea: is that hey, look, number one is oil money, Meh, not gonna last forever. So what we want to do is make ourselves, make our number one reputation not where the place that makes your gas expensive and every once in a while uh, uh, houses terrorists that take down your buildings. Sure. Uh, and that uh, the, a lot of that Vision 2030 stuff is like doing things like investing in American companies and basically saying, all right, we, we have a crap ton of money now. Let's start investing it in things that will make us money long after the oil yeah. in the ground runs out. Well, there, there's another thing here, too, that uh, says 70% of the population are under 30. Yeah. Right no, it's now. a very young country. So, yeah. So that's that to me means that, yeah, over the next 10, 20 years, it's going to change quite a bit as well. Because that's that's like a baby boomer type generation thing, right? Like, yeah. that's like that. That means like, yeah, that's at one point these these people who are young now will be replacing uh, all these people like on mass. And uh, that's yeah, that, you know, maybe at the end of this 10 years, the women are coming to Saudi Arabia. Like, you know, I, I, if you listen to Triple H talk about it, that seemed to be what he was insinuating is that yeah. like, look, like it's a slow moving now. progress, a slow moving thing. Yeah. But let's show that we can put on a show and then we can start making cultural requests. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, because there was also a, a random pause in the middle of the show. Yeah, Apparently that was for a prayer, a prayer yep. break. Yep. Um, and there, you know, there was a lot of things like that that were very much just okay. WWE is clearly just kind of letting them call the shots as far as well. Look, you know, this is a lot of. I, I forget. Yeah. I think it was. It was. Uh, I think it was Mitsula who was saying that this is basically like a, a, a sweet sixteen party. Like that they mm. just like like a very expensive version. It's like when they fly in Rihanna and like exactly. And like, yeah, my daughter really likes you. Sing for us. And there's like twenty people in the room. Exactly. Yeah, it's a weird thing, man. It's a weird thing, and it's also very weird that it was broadcast to the world. So. Um, <laughs> We all kind of got a little bit more of a little, an insider's look at what's going on. Hey, with this whole number one. It's, it's not something you get to see very often. Strap in because uh, we got another 10 years of this unless something happens. By the way, they were in trouble because despite the fact that none of the women performed, they did air that like five minute long. How long is that promo of them lip syncing to that? rap song or whatever uh, uh, to, oh, to yeah. uh, let everybody know that all the pay-per-views are dual branded now. Uh, they aired that on the big screens. That includes all the female performers in their ring gear. So all the shots of Carmella in her one piece and Sasha in, in her ring gear, which is verboten in Saudi Arabia, uh, that caused a apology from the mm. sports commission to the people of the kingdom. Yeah, whoops, we didn't mean to show you women in skimpy clothing. I'm so sorry. Whoopsie. Men doodle. in their underwear, though. A-OK. -okay. Oil them up. <laughs> Oil them up. Let them, let them start playing with each other. <laughs> I want to watch. 
<laughs> at the at the Saudi Sports Commission to the people of Saudi Arabia. This was yeah, this was the first line in their in their meeting, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's actually in the contract. Uh, all right, so let's go back to Vegas, which is where okay, we were watching this. At that point. Willie, you made a very, very wise decision, and I made a very unwise decision. Because you decided that you were going to go back to sleep. You were going to take a little disco nap. I decided that I was not, I was up. I was up for the day. And so I went down to the pool. And again, yet more people very excited for to hang out and to throw drinks in my face, which I drank dutifully. The next time we ran into each other was at the event that night. The the uh, we're, we're there for the TMS event, and so they had a a, a little a fun meet and greet with all the all the the people there. And uh, I think at that point, it was at that point that people I recognized that people started saying, "Wow, you're drunk." So it's like, yeah, you know, you've been in that situation where it's like all of a sudden you're like, you don't necessarily feel all that drunk. Like, sure, you feel like you had a few, but like then all of a sudden people are like, wow, you are you are faded. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm here now. Like, I don't, like, I mean, what, what are you really going to do at that point? You got to just ride it out. You got to grab that dragon by the tail and, and sure. see where see where it goes. I, I will say this, though, about that crowd. There's a lot of them that drink and then there's a lot of them that don't drink. And yeah. the moment you are acting any different than they remember you from all of your podcasts, you must be wasted. Yes. <laughs> like, I've definitely gotten that. And I'm like, no, nah, I've actually only had like two beers. So sure. I'm fine. At that point, though, we had had much more than two beers. So, yeah. to be fair. No, no, yes, no. They, it, was, it was not inaccurate. Nailed it. Because, by the way, I was on two I hours sleep. Were, I thought you were doing great. We went to, we, you know, we hung out there for a while. We went to a show. We did. Uh, saw a fun little band that I'd never heard of before. Uh, but Svet from Same Sex Barry was running the show. Great times. Took us over there. It was, it was a lot of fun. And then the night kind of wore on. And here's where I'm going to rely on you, Willie, to be uh, my narrator, because uh, I will say that at, at, at about the point <laughs> at about the point that we were at that show and that band was playing uh, was about where where I really the only thing that I absolutely remember very coherently was was knowing that it was time to go. I had yeah, to hit yeah, the, yeah. It, the, the, pretty the, the eject like, button. Got to yeah, get the we fuck were, out. We were getting uh we were getting a little sloppy, yeah. and yeah, we had to we had to go. So I think it was me, you, and did we get a ride or did we just jump in? I think we jumped in an Uber. It was right? an Uber, was but but we were also with uh, oh god, no, I'm, I, I apologize, but uh, with, with nine of twelve, September. nine of twelve, yeah, from from the the the, yeah. the the geek grills, yeah. And we went to my room and hung out for a little while, and then you basically were just like, I gotta go to bed, yeah. And I was like, I can't believe you made it this far. To be yes. completely honest. Uh, so, so, and then, uh, and then I decided. So I hear. All right. Go. So, let me just say, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah, little little uh, f flash forward to know that I don't. I go to sleep, and I wake up in all of my clothes uh, uh, when I hear a furious pounding. On my door, and a very exuberant Willie Dills busts in. But let's go ahead and listen to your story to find out how you get there. How did we get from there to there? Yeah. yeah. So I decided that, uh, well, I'd been playing some craps, and that had been going okay, not great. Uh, so I was clearly, I was playing the wrong game. Like, what am I doing mm -hmm. playing craps? Th mm -hmm. These table games, I always just sit there and eventually lose my money. So yeah. I decided, no, I'm going to go play some poker. And I, I kind of scrounged up whatever was left in my wallet after we'd been out all night and stuff. And it was like, <laughs> it was like a 200 bucks or something. It wasn't, it wasn't that great. So I go to, uh, to, what was it? The Golden Nugget, which has like a pretty decent poker room. And we're right on Fremont. We're right next to Fremont Street. It's like right there. Yeah. It's really not that far of a walk for me. So I head on over there. Uh, they got a couple of one, two, no limit games going, which is exactly what I wanted to play. And, I uh, so I like I buy in for like the whatever 200 bucks I have and then about 20 minutes later that was basically gone and I was like uh oh 
So I was like, okay, I need to go get some more cash out. I come back with, I think, I think I came back with 300 bucks and, uh, I'm sitting there for a while. We're having fun. There's a Russian guy next to me who's apparently flying out in like five hours. Me and him are kind of having fun. We're doing little side bets on like what color the flop is going to be and things gotcha. like that. We're having a we're having a good old time. And uh, and then at a certain point, and you know, I'm not like doing well. I'm not doing bad. I'm kind of just breaking even. I think I was I grinded it up to like four or five hundred bucks at some point. Yeah. Uh, and then and then a gentleman sits down. Uh, really well dressed, older guy, slicked back hair. Immediately throws like a thousand something dollars onto the table. Gotcha. And his his plan is clearly that he's going to he's going to run this table by just having the bigger stack than everybody else and all that. And uh, and I I just looked at him and said, "There's a thousand dollars on that table that I could win." So uh, we ended up getting into a hand. I think at this point I might have even gone up to a little more like seven hundred or something in front of me. So we you were you were you were doing well. You were doing okay. Yeah, yeah, I was doing pretty good. Me and him get into a hand where I have uh, the the powerful queen seven suited, and uh, I can't remember exactly what he had. But the flop comes two clubs. I had queen seven of clubs, and uh, he raises, and I say, "Well, all right, I'll stick around." Seven hits, so I'm like, "Well, now I have a pair and this this flush draw." So yeah, this seems good. Uh, and then I think at this point he checks. And then I bet, and he raises, and I'm like, oh, I can't let him just blow me off the hand here. I got something. Yeah. Third seven hits on the river, and uh, and he basically, I think, I think the action was, he pushed in and I insta called. I'm pretty okay. sure that's how it went down. There was some debate uh, afterwards on if if I had uh, uh, slow rolled him or not, but I'm pretty sure I insta called. Yeah. Um, and I turn over my three sevens and. And like I'm just kind of thinking like, oh man, please don't tell me like he's got something because there was no flush or straight on the board. I'm like, please don't tell me he has like you know pocket pair and has a full house or something. Yeah. He just goes like, wait, I thought I had three sevens or something oh, like that. Oh no! He had, yeah, he had misread his hand, and uh, it was funny because he gave all my all of his chips to me, and there was like a whole stack of like hundred dollar bills underneath them, and so I got all of those too. Oh, so he uh, just and then he pushed instantly in. Instantly got up and left. He just pushed in literally everything, just like yeah. all the paper, all the chips, because he's everything. just trying to bully the rest of the the rest of everybody around there just to take yeah. everybody's money because he had a big stack and he got caught for all of it. And he got caught for all of it. And uh, suddenly everybody like looked at me like, OK, well, you can't leave now because you have all the money on the table. But I so I did. There is like these weird unspoken rules. If you like win a huge pot, you're not supposed to immediately get up and leave the table. Yeah. Uh, but it was at this point, it was like like countdown or six in the morning. Yeah. yeah. No, so no. At like, that, at that, at that I, point, I will do the honorable thing. I will yeah. play for a little while longer, but not much longer. Like this was kind of what I was. No, I was kind of hoping for it to happen here. And it did. I'm not now just going to sit here for an hour and dump it all back. So. I played some pots. I wasn't like totally tight. I was you know, having some fun with people. When I got up, everyone was like, no. I was like, it's so late. Sorry, uh, dude. Yeah. So then I get back to your or I get back <laughs> to my room and your phone is sitting there on my uh, on my chair. Yeah. And basically I was like, I don't know if I'm going to see Jerry again. I should probably <laughs> go give it to him now. Also, now I get to tell somebody my sweet story. <laughs> so what all, all I know is that I go from Passing out at the end of the night of a fairly lengthy day of, of, of very hard drinking. My hangover the next day was righteous. It was the hammer of God into my temple. Uh, but all I see is this brilliant ray of sunshine bursting through my door. <laughs> and it's just Willie, wild-eyed, saying, Jury, here's your phone. I haven't gone to sleep all night because I've been making these fat stacks as he just yeah. like f spreads out his gigantic wad of hundreds uh, uh, for the, that he had just taken off that dude at the table. And it was it was the guiding the guiding light for the rest yeah. of my day. It was, it was, nice. it was so, the, yeah, like I so because I had lost the 200 when I when I started and bought in, I think I was up about a thousand eleven hundred something like that. But I, I walked away with like sixteen hundred bucks or something like that. Jesus. And yeah. The the dangerous part of it when you when it's money won like that is yeah. then it just seems like it doesn't matter. So when I went to see Avengers the next day, because uh, I just I had to check out at eleven. Yeah, I texted you. I was like, "Can I just sleep in your room?" And <laughs> and and you, and, and you would have you would have been able to if yeah. I hadn't been sleeping, which I was. Yeah. So so uh, 
when uh, when I come out from from my room, I'm like, well, okay, I haven't heard from Jerry yet, so I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go just see if I can see the Avengers. And it turns out there's a movie theater really close to our hotel. Okay. But it was one of these like really nice. You sit in a recliner and they give you a blanket and they have craft cocktails and like gourmet nice. foods and things like that. But I have fifteen hundred extra bucks burning a hole in my pocket, so I I get like a carafe of of sangria. <laughs> <laughs> I get like popcorn and a burger and like a, and some nachos. So it's like uh, a, yeah. a a hundred fifty dollar trip to the movies. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was. I think I went through an entire bill uh, for the for the movie, but it was really really fun and it was a good movie. And uh, yeah, it was a nice way to kind of like celebrate the fact that I had a bunch of extra cash in my pocket. That's that is amazing. Uh, and then unfortunately, you had to leave. Everybody, there were there were rumors. Yeah. Rumors were going around that because of your new windfall, that that you might uh, you might you might move your uh, your try your, to move my flight. flight. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is I couldn't move my work the next day. Yeah, and that was really the yeah that was the issue that that forced me to just have to bite the bullet and say, all right, I'm leaving. I, I was actually looking to see if there was a flight I could take like later in the evening. But oh, so you to move that would have ended up costing me like more than I was comfortable with. So yeah, no, it was the right move. Look, uh, much like it wasn't just the table you needed to escape that morning. You needed to escape the city. <laughs> you needed yeah, to yeah, get yeah, the yeah. hell out of done. Vegas with that money. Done. Needed to get home, try to get some sleep. I then I had to wake up early and go pick up Iggy before I went to work. And so last night at work, I was just, I was dying. But let me. Oh, I got one more. I got one more little. So it's been an eventful few weeks okay go ahead so you know i've been working in a hotel bar yep right yep. as well as the i had my first uh tip with a note folded into the tip with a room number <laughs> and a phone well number. my 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 can you can you give us a little description uh i'll just well i'll say i didn't go up there because i've not been working there very long and i don't want to like i assume that's frowned upon sure Sure. To just suddenly like run up to the room, but uh, well, but, you don't you don't uh, immediately I, I, you don't abandon your post, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Like after you know after I'm done or whatever, I was sure. like, no, nah, I'm not going up there. No, no, no. Uh, you, know, you, 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 you don't you don't want to immediately flattered. you don't want to immediately get the reputation of the coxman of the bar. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. But uh, you know, she was nice. She was cute. But I I don't know. Um, she's like she's. She's some lady who's in the bar. Like she's, you know, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, like, like in it's on business. I, I, I assume there was some kind of discussion before, uh, uh, before she drops the digits on you. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, it's a, it's not a very busy place, so yeah, um, yeah. Like I, I have like long conversations with lots of people who are in there. So yeah, we were talking about where she's from, what she's doing, all that kind of stuff. It, but it, it, there was nothing like overt about any of it. Mm hmm. It was basically, yeah, like the note just said, I just thought you were cute. I was like, all right. Well, God damn. <laughs> Everything's coming up, Willie. I mean, listen, you're getting you're getting uh, uh, offers, uh, you know, at, at, at the hotel bar. Hotel bar, I assume that that's probably a place where that kind of happens a little bit. That's that's what I was thinking. I was like, I, this can't be like a, a, a totally uncommon thing. We'll find out. Over we, all right, here, guys, email in. There. Email in Justin Robert Young at Gmail. Uh, dot com one nine hundred in the subject line we need a name so you can just you don't have to go into it right we can just have a name when uh uh, uh this happens again or if it okay. never happens sure. again then we will know that this happened only once sure sure uh, now, this is my goal now i'm gonna make this happen <laughs> oh jesus oh now the gauntlet's been thrown down no i'm not i'm not i mean but like you know it's uh, only good if it happens naturally right I mean, but, yeah, but what's natural? Is, is it is it unnatural to be a charming, handsome young man serving no, drinks and providing good companionship? Not at all. Yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> tell you what. This is getting. Uh, <laughs> D, D Mexpin calls it a Carl Spicy Wiener. <laughs> I don't know. I think we can do better than a Carl Spicy Wiener. <laughs> but it's got to be yeah, like we'll an action. It's got to be a yeah. thing. We'll workshop it. We'll come back to it. Uh, uh, I don't even know if there's any other wrestling news that we have, although I have really fucking enjoyed this episode of the show where we <laughs> yes. talked about a bunch of random stuff. All right, yeah, we talked about that. We talked about New Japan tickets that we're going to get tomorrow. If you are planning on going to the G1 show in the Cal Palace, please, please, please do. We're going to be rolling deep, sun. We got me, 
Dills is coming out. Mitzula's coming out. Gabe's going to be there. Uh, uh, my wife. Man, we got a crew, and we are going to try to get uh, 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 as close to that ring as possible for, uh, for, for that show because I got a feeling, man, that Cow is is going to be rocking, uh, uh, which is going to be awesome. To, to have that arena, you know, uh, jumping up and down the way that it was back in the heyday, that's going to be a special event. So we will be there for that. And then, of course, yeah, Raw, SmackDown, all those fun things coming up. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the Melodica Challenge. This was last week's. Wait a minute. This might have been the week before. Yeah, I think this is. Yeah, I think this was last week's. Yeah. Uh, that, of course, is Kevin Owens. Did you see his. Uh, his. What's it called? The uh, 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 The first promo that he did. To like try and get into the performance center. Uh, it was posted on no. Squared Circle, but basically it was fantastic. I mean, like that's one of those promos where you're like, okay, yeah, right now, like uh, not only do, are you in, you're getting the push that he got like immediately, where uh, he went right after Sami Zayn, because uh, that the promo is all about Sami Zayn. It's all about how. Uh, uh, the the it might have been the best day in Sami Zayn's life for him to uh, get signed, but it was the worst day in Kevin Owens because mm. he had to uh, he immediately became a terrible husband and a terrible father to his kids because he was just so pissed off that he that Sammy got the opportunity and he didn't and that's why Kevin Steen is coming right for Sami Zayn. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was fantastic. All right. So I hear I hear the Kevin Owens, but play it one more time because I heard CM Punk too. And watch if you can yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, maybe Look it, in my eyes. <laughs> oh maybe it is CM Punk. It actually might be CM Punk. All right. I might have screwed all this up. And I didn't load this week, so we're gonna have to do that next week. Uh because, yeah, because you can hear that this is the similarity because, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Look in my eyes. Yeah, what do you see? Uh, all right. Let's. Okay. You want to know what? I can't find it. I'm sure it's one of these, though. Uh, all right. I think I got it here. No, it's got to be. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be CM Punk because Kevin Owens was number 50. And this is number 52. I, okay. I thought so. I was like, because, yeah, there's a little more. There's a little more to it than just the wow, 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 wow. Yeah, like I feel, I feel like yeah, he's done that one before, and it was very recognizable. Very recognizable. All right, hey, Dills, when you're not uh, possibly banging hotel guests, uh, what are you up to? Uh, I will be, I will, I will maybe be streaming tonight. It depends. I have a lot of stuff I got to take care of because we just got back and I had to work. Uh, but definitely tomorrow and Wednesday there will be streams. Uh, get back in it. I got to play Monster Hunt, man. I haven't had a got chance to dive into it. So, so twitch.tv slash Willie Dills. Come check me out playing all that stuff. There's still a lot of decks I got to. I, I still so many things I haven't explored with Witchwood. But uh, every single time I've come up with a weird idea, it's been so fun. By the way, so do you have a do you have a, expansions for sure. do you have do you have a, you have a you have a one minute take on uh, Ben Brode being uh, being out ski? Um, it's sad for the it's sad for like the podcasters, community people, that kind of stuff, because he was such a great ambassador there. Um, it's not sad for the game. The game is going to be in, in great hands. And, you know, they moved Chalky in, who has been one of the best minds in uh, in Hearthstone from the player's perspective. So 
I really do think that we're fine going forward. He, I, I just, you know, he got 15 years in with the company, 10 years on one game. It's time to do something different. So uh, it's not, this is not like an omen of doom or anything like that. This is just a guy who wants to do uh, something different professionally. It makes yeah. total sense. I'll tell you what, I, 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 I agree with you. So wait, hold on. Have, have they named the new head? Uh, no, not the game director, but they brought in a few new people as well at the same yeah. time as him going out. So, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, big, big shout I would out. I guess maybe Mike Denae would be the guy that might get the nod, but I haven't seen any announcements yet. Yeah. Uh, well, folks, please go ahead and check him out. Twitch.tv slash Willie Dills. You can check me out. Twitch.tv slash Justin R. Young. That's where this fine program is streamed every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and <laughs> apparently my Skype just reset. Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. That is uh, uh, 3 p.m. On the West Coast. Uh, let's see if we can uh, get Willie back. Otherwise. Oh, no, I think he's... I think Willie just might have went out. So, that's fine. We're at the end of the episode. My name is Justin R. Young. Find me, Justin R. Young, every social media platform you possibly have. I'm going to be watching Raw and SmackDown. Oh, I'm going to be getting these New Japan tickets. I'm so excited. I want to see... Suzuki murders somebody on American soil. Then he just comes to America and lives like some kind of weird hermit. Anyway, until next time. I want you to call me for all of wrestling's latest news and views. I will see I you guys next ideas, week. For Willie Does Gregory, I'm Justin Robert one. Young. Be dialing! Stupid idiots. They call me a hot rock. Hurt your smile. What the rock is cooking. And his name is John Cena. Well, look at this, prima donna. Thank God Donald Trump won't have it yet. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>